Welcome to Raw and Uncut. This is Brendan's reaction to the final episode of Ahsoka, and I'm pretty sure I can't wa I can't film it without getting copyright struck. So this is going on YouTube. Yep. But this is his live reaction to him watching the final seconds, the final moments of Ahsoka. Because there's one last surprise, surprise, surprise that he does not know about. And you're gonna, and you're gonna see it raw and uncut. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. Anakin slash Vader dies in episode 6 of Turn of the Jedi, and then at the end, you see Ben Kenobi, Yoda, and then he, Anakin finally becomes a Force ghost. But in Clone Wars, but he is referenced, the, the father, who is the balance of the light side and the dark side, says that he wants Anakin to be his successor. To unite them. And we pretty much see that when Ahsoka goes into the world between worlds, he basically is the, he's basically the new father because he he's the perfect balance between Vader and Anakin, and they're on that Peridia, which I guess is that uh, planet, and he sees the statues of the father, the son, and the daughter, and the temple, and then the last scene is Anakin's Force Ghost looking after Ahsoka, who's basically the embodiment. Of the daughter, because Morai follows her around. Yeah, Morai. Morai. Thoughts, comments, concerns. He did it. He freaking did it. You son of a bitch! I love you, Dave Filoni. <laughs> you freaking did it. So then the prophecy did come true. Then yeah, he propounds the. Yeah. Anakin Skywalker brought balance to the dark and light sides of the Force. Yeah, because he, he's literally the embodiment of both. He's the but he's the embodiment of the balance. Wow. How okay. did you feel about the Death Troopers? Badass. Right, so that's candid now. Love that. Thoughts about Sabine? I, I, I actually turned to you and said that was a book. You did? Um, I haven't read it, but I heard it was really good. Now I kind of want to read it. Um, thoughts on Sabine? She, because you see, okay. In my mind, as I'm watching this, I'm flashing back to, I guess it was seasons two and three of Rebels when Kanan was still alive and was training Sabine. So like, yeah, because she had the dark saber. She had the dark saber, right? Because, uh, yeah, right, right, right. That was right. Because she ends up giving it back to Bo-Katan. Bo-Katan, uh, Katan, yeah, Bo-Katan. Um. So I was in my mind, I was flashing back to that, and it was like, this is how you know she started out. Now look where she's at. Yeah, I mean, because like, she she did train she did train a bit. She did w with Ahsoka as well. True. And then Hu with, Yang... With an actual lightsaber. Yeah, with Ezra's lightsaber. And then Hu yeah. Yang, he talked about the purge of Mandalore. Yeah. And that Sabine was training for the wrong... Ahsoka was afraid that uh, Sabine was training for the wrong reasons. Right. Because her family was killed in the purge of Mandalore. Yep. And then, I told you, I looked it up. Sabine is a descendant of the Jedi Mandalore. The first Jedi Mandalore. Which... Explains why she's force sensitive. I think his name was Mandalore the Great. Uh, I'm 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 not really sure though, so don't quote me on that. Um, Star Wars theories mentioned and brought him up a few times. Yeah, that in the text. No, I forget I forget his name. Um, so that was cool learning that. Although I'm glad you told me that while that it was, was going, going on. Oh, excuse me. Wrong on cut, baby. Because, you know, they didn't really explain that. Yeah, no, they didn't. So, you know, I would have... I mean, I, I don't know. I guess I would have figured that out eventually. But, you know, 
Yeah. So I'm glad you explained that to me because that makes so much more sense. And my thing is, is people can't use, oh, she's too old to be trained as a Jedi, yada, yada. They literally explained it in episode one that Obi-Wan was technically too old to be tra- uh, trained because his, his abilities didn't show up until late. Right. And in the original trilogy, four, five, and six, Yoda even said Luke was too old to train because he, right. I, I think in that he was like, what, 20? I think he was like yeah. early, late teens, early twenties. Right. And the ideal training is literally as a kid. Yeah. I think, I think, uh, three, four years old. Yeah. And Luke was 20. And I think, I think Obi-Wan was 22 training as a Jedi. So they were both late. And, uh, yeah, look at Luke. Uh, look at Luke. He literally, he was able he was able to do what Ahsoka and Obi-Wan couldn't. He brought he brought back Anakin, fulfilling the prophecy, becoming the embodiment of balance in the force. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. What what are what are your thoughts uh thoughts on the series as a whole? Okay, so now having watched all eight episodes. Okay. Since I'm doing this here with you, and you're the cameraman. But that's okay, because that still counts, because you're right here. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> I loved this series from the beginning. Oh, yeah. I had no doubt in my mind Dave Filoni was going to do this series justice and was going to make it epic. Especially when Star Wars themselves leaked that Hayden Christensen... Was coming back as Anakin. Yeah. And the, you didn't know if it was going to be flashbacks or actually him. And it was, or it's a force ghost. And, or if it was a hologram. Right. But it was all of the above. Yeah. Like it was actually him, yeah. flashback to Clone Wars. It was a hologram, a force so, ghost. So, from episode one, from the get-go, I was totally on board with this. I loved it. I was hyped. I could not wait to watch and experience this because, and me and you, you know, we we discussed this. This is basically season five. Yeah, of the, Rebels. They, they, Dave Filoni confirmed it. Yeah, that it was season five of Rebels that you know we never really got. Yeah, and I was I was more than okay with that because as as much of a diehard Clone Wars fan as I am, I do also really like Rebels too. However. I think I like Clone Wars slightly more than Rebels, but I do. We, yeah. but I do still like both. I think that both of us can agree that the MVP of this entire series is Episode Five. That's just what I was getting towards. So, like I stated, from the first episode, from the get-go, I loved this series. I knew I would. I fell in love with it. I was very confident Dave Filoni was doing. It's just, it was going to be great. Then episode five. A a Clone Wars wet dream. Episode five happened. And you see, up until... So from episodes one to four, I watched them by myself. You watched them by yourself. Well, I watched them with my brother, but... Well, yeah, still. Yeah, we didn't watch them. We watched five together. Episode five happens. We hang out. We watch it together. When it gets to the Clone Wars flashback scenes, we legitimately freaked freaked out. We stood up. We were hugging each other and jumping up and down in the same movement. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. That is how freaking amazing episode five and was. Although at when, least for yeah, us. Oh yeah. And although this was the second time we got to see Rex in live action. Yes. Because the first time was Re- uh, Return of the Jedi, Episode Six. Mm-hmm. He was he he was all, and it, it was him from Rebels, like. And Rebels confirmed it. Yeah, and Rebels Rebels confirmed that that was him. But this this was the first time we've gotten a Tamara Morrison voiced live action Clone Wars. 
Captain Rex. And that sounded really good, too. I mean, D. Bradley Baker is the name of the voice actor. He voiced all the clones in the Clone Wars. Yeah. But Tamara Morrison is legit. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was the yeah. Clone Army. Yeah. So... He was, he was also an Obi-Wan as one of the homeless clones. He was. He was. I mean... Yeah, I obviously watched the prequels and original trilogy movies before the Clone Wars. Yes. But, you know, I did grow up watching the Clone Wars, and the Clone Wars grew... Well, not grew. The Clone Wars had a very heavy influence on me as a young teenager. Now... I'm glad they got Tamora Morrison to come back and voice Rex, because that only makes sense. However, I am very used to hearing Dee Bradley Baker's voice as the clones, too. Well, yeah, because like, I, like you said, we, 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 grew, we grew up on Clone Wars, but to bring back the OG clone trooper... I mean, that, that only makes sense. That, that, like, that I because, shouldn't even say, yeah, the OG clone trooper, because, because... Yeah, that was him in Attack of the Clones and Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, yeah, oh my god, I yeah, forgot about it, yeah. Yeah, yeah so, because he, it started off as Jango Fett, as Jango, and then yeah. when you literally get to play, that, that that's like, he's the Harrison Wells mm -hmm. of Star Wars. Yeah. Because Harrison Wells in The Flash got to play different versions of himself, or the actor got to play different versions of himself. Tamara Morrison literally got to play a couple of versions of himself. Yeah. As Jango Fett, as Commander Cody, and basically his son. Like he got to he got to play Boba Fett in Boba Fett. Yeah. So And the homeless version of himself as a homeless clone trooper. But if you want to care who but who's counting that. Yeah. But So that was really cool to me. I love that. The the fact that uh I love how they did the live action Mandalore Siege with the Maldalorians. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was that was sick to see. A absolutely. So, even though it's only eight episodes, which on one hand I feel like is too short, on the other hand I feel like I got just enough. Without of... without saying that you're sad to see it drug out because yes. that's honestly that's why I stopped watching. And I'm gonna bring up the Flash again. There, there's, there's. It's too there's I believe there's so there's such a thing as too much. Yes, and yep. I feel like that like yep, like ever was eight seasons, but like they they didn't even cut like like I, mean, I I don't know I I would probably actually say they both kind of went on a little. Well, I get it. But yeah, well, yeah, well, I'm being uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This is this is probably just me being a Green Arrow fan, because the show is why I love Green Arrow. But I feel like the Flash just drug on. Because I mean, no, it 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 definitely did. Maybe worse so than Arrow. Would, but I mean, like yeah. I, I I like I said, I'm happy it was only they. And then I hear that they're doing a movie to like, f like finish it. Like, and I th I I hope it's hair uh, heir to the Empire. That would be really interesting. Because, because think about it. Because Thrawn is now not only... He's back. He's not only live action, but he's back. And you have Death Troopers. So... And we've seen live action Dathomir. We have. So... I mean, it only makes sense to do a Hair to the Empire movie. Theoretically, yes, that does. Because chronologically... Now, I have Heir to the Empire book. I haven't actually read it. But it takes place after, after Return of the Jedi. In the New Jedi Order. Oh, and, dude, yeah. Well, dude, that would make sense because in Boba Fett, Luke yeah. is building a New Jedi Temple. Yeah, uh, New Jedi Order slash New Republic. Yeah. So that would line up perfectly with that timeline of when the book takes place. Yeah. So theoretically, that would make sense to do that. And if Dave Filoni is directing and or writing... Patron or... saint of Star Wars. And they're, they're the, the Dave Filoni and the Holy George Lucas. 
you know, if he's writing, producing, or even directing it, I'm on board. Oh, yeah. I'm 100% on board. Shut up, take my money, you know. Oh, yeah. You don't even have to ask me twice. Oh, no, definitely, yeah. So, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with Balin Skull, at least the character, since he saw the temple, he was standing on the statues. Yeah, so now, Balin Skull... Because I, I told you my theories are, they're either gonna like, oh, we just we just missed them kind of stereo since the actor's dead, uh-huh. or they're gonna CGI them, like Grand Moff Tarkin and Princess Leia in uh, Rogue One. Oh, so so you're asking what I would like to see done with him? Well, yeah. So, okay. First off, that is really a shame, and really terrible yeah that that actor passed away um i think you said in the very first episode yeah it, 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 a, yeah because i think a memoriam yeah it, it said it said uh for ray was it ray stevens yeah it was like for race uh, for our friend ray yeah and then because he i think he, he passed away literally right before it aired that's so sad so I would say that it was really tragic and sad that he passed, and most importantly, that he didn't get to see how well the series did. Exactly. Most importantly, how many people like his character. Oh, this is... I see a lot of people online talking about how much they like his character, the, the, the design, his lightsaber. Yeah. Even his backstory, which we didn't really get that much of, but we got a little bit about him. Um, One of my favorite lines is actually from Balin Skull when he was fighting. I think he was fighting Ahsoka for the first time, and he go and he found out that Anakin was her master, and he goes, "Everybody, everybody knew Anakin, but only few lived to see what he became." Right, right. That just hit deep, dude. No, it it did. It did. So, what would I like to see done with him? Because, I, personally, I, I would say respecting a family, ask their permission to CGI him. Yes. And then because, Absolutely. because you can't just end the, his character. No. Like, and I know no. he's dead. You know, it's, rest in peace. But, but yeah, bro, his character, it, he found... It's basically Mortis, dude. Like, yeah. yeah, but on another planet, planet in another galaxy, another far, galaxy. far away. Right. I agree with you. I would, I would have to ask his family permission if it's okay, and then I would CGI him, maybe reusing some footage. Or they can do what they did with Indiana Jones, put his face in the guy. Because that's yes. they, cause they, they, they de age Harrison Ford and yes. did that. I would be okay with that. The only thing I don't think I'd be okay with is if they completely replaced him with a whole nother actor. Oh, yeah, no. That I think I would I think have a problem with. If they did, I, I would rather him just be like, oh, we just, like a we just missed them scenario and you never actually see the character. Again, right. So, yeah, that's, that's my answer to that. Yeah. His apprentice. Shin Hati, which I think she's going to become a Jabba the Hutt type warlord for the I shouldn't say warlord no no but you know where I'm going with this like she's going to become like the Jabba the Hutt of these people the nomads as Thrawn called them oh like she's going to become okay. like she's going to become like the main leader okay and she's gonna be like you know ezra she's gonna find out that as not ezra that uh sabine and ahsoka are still are trapped on this planet as well so right. her, i feel like her her whole story is gonna be like hunting them trying to kill them yeah i'm okay gangster style well not actually like gangster but you know what i mean i'm i'm really curious to see where they go now from here because exactly really you made a good point balan shin ahsoka sabine and hu yang 
And uh, the the naughty. And the naughty. The naughty. Yeah, I'm gonna say naughty. They're they're all trapped on that planet. So. Well, the naughty aren't. That's they're native. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So you got you got and plus, Balin pretty much walked out on Shin. Basically. So now you, now you you have three different storylines you can do. Yeah, you know that was that was a big portrayal. Somehow though, I kind of saw that coming. Yeah. I I I think they kind of sort of hinted at that. Yeah. That um, even though he was her master, he kind of was seeming like that. Well, especially when they first got there, like. He was like, "Oh, there's something here." He wanted to push her away. Well, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to say push her away. Well, I would, I would yeah, say maybe, maybe not push her. Away. I would say because he was like, "Oh, he goes, there's a, she goes, there's a reason why they're leaving," mm-hmm. and he's like, "Maybe there's a greater power, and that's why they're leaving." Right. So he, he wanted to stay. She right. wanted to leave, right. and it was like conflict of interest. They split it. They split. Yeah. So. All right. So, Raw and Uncut has gone on for 21 minutes. Wow. Uh, we're keeping it. No editing whatsoever. Final thoughts and comments on the series, episode, whatever. Ahsoka as a whole, the series? I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I could not say a single bad thing about it. Could not. I literally... Thought it was perfect from start to finish. All right. I I I just I just really couldn't say anything bad about it. All right. So, well, you heard it here from the King of Games ninety eight. I am Kevlar Wolf, and this has been raw and uncut. I have to say before we go, I really enjoy doing these. This is def- by far definitely the longest one we've done. Yes. Because the other the other two were like I think the longest like ten minutes. Yeah. But uh, no, we gotta do more. E- e- even if, even if it's like, and I don't mean just like shows. We could do like games and like one-off games and just title them raw and uncut. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like think think about it. Like uh. Yeah. So, I've been your cameraman for the day, Kevlar Wolf, King of Games ninety eight, and a watch.